Thanks for choosing WCCO tonight. I'm Don Schultz. And I'm Amelia Santanello. Right now, searchers are trying to figure out where two women may have gone wrong in a hike through the North Woods. The woman left Friday for a weekend trip on the Kekakovic Trail between Ely and the Gunfoot Lake. A search started when they didn't finish on Monday as planned. Feels like 37 degrees up there tonight, and it's expected to be even colder in the next couple nights. Tuesday morning, a worker at the Gunflint Lodge called the sheriff after a man came in saying his friends were missing. County Sheriff's Office and U.S. Forest Service did extensive ground and air searches. There's still no sign of them. Hopefully those hikers are safe. We were kind of like concerned because we thought it was my bears, right? We thought it was bears, but uh, uh, we just actually found out right now that it was something else. Why the Lake County Sheriff is trying to get a search plane up again to look for the women tonight. And officials say so far this year, eight people have died here. Many people have uh, actually either turned back or uh, they did not really have a pleasant wilderness experience. More than 30 search and rescue rangers at Yosemite scoured the area searching the trail and the river. Rangers closed off portions of the trail as news quickly spread to hikers in the area. Say they average between 12 to 15 deaths a year. In case you're wondering what's going on, um, I've got my flashlight turned on and um, it's spooking all the birds in the trees. I'm not sure if you could hear it on the on the video. I hope you can hear it because this is like really freaky. It's the oddest sound I've ever heard. Okay. I'm toasty warm in this new coat. Got a new fleece underneath. Running from out. Got a bell club around my head. Plenty of friends about. But there's some to run away when I come nearby. All I need now. All I need now is to be attacked by a werewolf. Alright. I think that'll do for now. is a malevolent spirit literally brought into life through what we consider one of the most ultimate acts of evil, cannibalism. They have been part and parcel of Native American culture since time immemorial. They normally start out as a human that becomes depraved and cannibalistic. And those cannibalistic tendencies make it turn into this monster. The Wendigo is insatiable. 
it wants flesh, it wants blood, it is never satisfied with, with the amount of what it can eat. All of its descriptions emphasize its monstrosity, its um, deviation from mankind. It can literally move between time and space to be where its victims are. And so when the Wendigo has its sights on you as a victim, there is no escape. I think that the Algonquin Indian tale of the Wendigo has more to do with mental health than it does with cannibalism. Wendigo psychosis could be characterized as a very extreme form of cabin fever. Typically what happens in a Wendigo psychosis is that somebody is trapped or isolated with other people for very, very long periods of time. And they may have plenty of provisions to eat. And what happens in this syndrome is that a person will start to develop the belief that they're going to turn into a monster and then cannibalize the other people around them. And so it can become a very, very dangerous delusion. We can think of the Wendigo psychosis as a form of compulsion, and they believe that once they eat the human flesh that they're always going to want to eat and they'll never get enough. And in a way, this can be similar to a syndrome such as drug addiction.